I'm Dr. Mike Milligan. I'm here with Dr. Bill Dome from Upland, California. We're here at the Aesthetics meeting in Tampa, Florida, and Bill was one of the keynote speakers on ozone. Bill, thanks so much for being with us. Glad to be here and glad you asked me to chat with you a little bit because this is something I love, like to talk to a lot of people about. It's stuff we don't know much about in this country, unfortunately. We are totally surrounded in the United States by other countries that have been using this for years. This goes back decades in Europe in medicine and dentistry, and dentistry has been late to the game, but has really gotten really cranking in Europe, South America, Canada. We're the last to the table, ah, and FDA probably FDA okay. is, the, is the big uh, stopping point for us here. But, but I'm hearing more and more about this. And the, the question is, why is the FDA a stopping point? They've, they've really stood in the way of Helazone, the major manufacturer of ozone units. Uh, for over five years trying to get their application through and they've been dinking around with them and they've really given them the shaft to put it bluntly. First they came through as a medical device and then they decided well this is a new drug that you're applying for. But in point of fact uh, dentists can use the technology that is being used in just about every other country of the world at their own discretion for their own patients with proper uh, consent. And um, about the only thing that the FDA will not allow us to do is do a lot of public advertising about uh, grandiose claims of cures. But in point of fact, uh, having used this for over five years in my practice and working with a number of other people here and in South America, I have seen tremendous benefits to an awful lot of people by using ozone. Uh, starts out, everybody thinks about killing cavity bugs and that's certainly a very valid way of using ozone. Uh -huh. But there's a heck of a lot more you can do with ozone besides just stopping cavities in their tracks and reversing them. Uh, I mean, if, if that's all ozone d did, I think that would be Still an entirely great, useful great technology. Right. You bet. And uh, with the stuff that we can do now, we can stop decay, we can reverse pulpitis, you can desensitize teeth, you can get rid of herpetic and other kinds of viral lesions, you can stop aphthous ulcers from hurting in seconds, tremendous number of applications and probably for us the most dramatic has been saving implants that were going down the tubes and were inches from being uh, really? taken out. Oh. Uh, right now in my own practice we're 10 out of 15 saving implants that were referred by other surgeons and other offices that were that, that had quite a bit of bone loss around them. Tremendous bone Failing loss and implants. infection wow. and they that's, were basically throwing true. up their hands and some I think we got to too late, some we didn't quite know as much as we do now, mm -hmm. but uh, I think it's certainly a very valid tool to apply before you throw up your hands. Uh, in endo, tremendous applications for stopping post-operative infection and pain uh, prior to cementing a crown. Ozonate the tooth, remove the sensitization there, and uh, get a better bonding layer. Tremendous number of applications, great. yeah. <laughs> well, it, it almost makes me feel uncomfortable because there's so many applications, it sounds like we're really off the wall. And I was extremely skeptical when I first came into the discipline. And and how I spent, long have you been doing this? Uh, five years in actuality using it, but mm -hmm. two more years of doing hands-on testing and uh, doing due diligence with the people who basically wrote the book on the subject before I, I really felt it was comfortable to start using it. Okay. And uh, it's been uh, working fantastically ever since. I'm sorry and, I took and, that long. And you're using this in your practice, but you also uh, do trips to South America yes. where you're able to use it a lot. Well, we have hundreds of people using it in South America because it's very easy for them to adopt things that take us forever to do here in the uh, legal and encumbered United States, unfortunately. So you've got a lot of experience with this. We've got a lot of experience here and tremendously more in South America. Right. We, we've taught maybe a hundred people in the States and multiple times that in South America. And it's being used every day. And the last time I traveled down there to Ecuador, I got surprised with a journal article on ozone bleaching. I didn't even know they were ozone producing. Ozone bleaching? Yes. And uh, you can use ozone as an adjunct to the bleaching materials that we normally use. It speeds up the process by, oh, I would say 25 to 50 percent in terms of time wow. and effectiveness. But even more important, there is zero sensitivity post-operatively. You don't see the zingers that we're commonly exposed to. Uh, when we do the conventional so, in-office type so bleaching. you can use this in conjunction with the uh, other types of bleaching? Yes, use the strongest bleach you can find and activate it using ozone. 
Wow. Okay. And reduce and, and no sensitivity. It's zero sensitivity post-operatively. Uh, using ozone by itself would eventually work, but combined with the stronger in-office bleaching agents, that's, I think, the way to go. Okay. Uh, we use it for caries control, we use it for perio, and for multiple tooth applications, generally we'll make uh, silicone trays in order to do a more rapid, effective uh, application, because you may want to spend 30 seconds to a minute per tooth, and if you've got 20 teeth or more to, to handle, I'm going to fall asleep right, right, before right. I'm done. So, right. and in fact, uh, most of this stuff is not done by me. The staff will make the trays at my direction and then they apply the ozone. Uh, the key here is that you have to use it properly and you can do some damage with ozone. There are two tissues in the body that really don't like ozone and that's the lung and the eye. Okay. All the rest of the human tissues like ozone and in fact do use ozone normally in their regular biochemistry business in order to kill bacteria. And so human cells tolerate ozone very well, by and large. That is not the case for bacteria, for virus, for fungi, and even prion disease. You expunge all of them essentially instantly if you can get the ozone to them. And that's the key. In learning how to use this properly, you have to be able to get the ozone to the lesion. And uh, depending on what ozone application unit, uh, you may have to wait a little bit for the ozone to penetrate. Most uh, common unit in the world is a helozone unit from CAVO, and that puts out a relatively low level ozone uh, stream made from air. It puts out about five micrograms per ml of the gas that comes out of it. The current unit that we're using, uh, this one here, is a generator that puts out over 114 micrograms per ml. And the, the point of all that is that you get greater depth of penetration and more rapid penetration. And we also are quite adamant about using an a oxygen source for this rather than air. So besides making a stronger ozone stream, we're also not getting some of the other byproducts, nitrogen oxides, that are really that's under, that's undesirable. Want, right? I and wouldn't want it on a, me. If you use an air-powered uh, unit, then you get a lot of that. Uh, but with the oxygen unit, you get none of that. Correct. And, uh, uh, nitrogen oxides are like what comes out of your muffler. And some yeah. of those things you would not want to be breathing, and some of them, of them, in fact, turn into acids. Now, if your only application is to sterilize a cavity, that may not be so bad, and it may even, in, in fact, make the units work faster. But we are way beyond just sterilizing right. cavities with this, and in fact, we'll sample out a, a, a low-level stream from the uh, generator units and actually inject it into soft tissue. You don't want to be doing that if you can't control very precisely what you're getting out of your unit. 